Pythagoras is really cool because you can use it to approximate numbers like the square root of 66 basically to three decimal places. And we're going to see how in this video, it's also going to be practiced with tangent lines, linearization, differentiation, and everything in between, and concavity too. So let's dive right into it. So what is the square root of 66? How are we going to approximate it? We're going to start off with the function f of x equals square root x, and we're going to first find the derivative. And we're going to see how this all plays in. Okay, so first step is to find what is f prime of x. So the way I like to do this is f of x is equal to the square root of x. Um, square root of x is x power half. Okay, that's a nice way of looking at it. So we've got x power half, and now we try to use the power rule. So with the power rule, what happens is you take the derivative, the half comes out in front, and in the exponent, it drops by one. So we get half times x power negative half, because negative half is half minus one. And then what you can do is, you know x power negative half, negative exponents come down below. So you get one over two times x to the half, which is one over two root x. That's a nice expression for f prime of x. That's part A. Let's go into part B. Find the tangent line at x equals 64. So how do we find the equation of the tangent line at x equals 64? So one way of doing this, and I just like to sort of draw the graph, okay, just to kind of visualize what's going on. So with the graph, what you like to do is, you like to say, okay, square root x, it's like a parabola, it's the inverse of x squared, okay? So it's like a parabola, it's reflected in the line y equals x, the inverse function. So you can sort of draw, it looks something like this, okay? So if you tilt your head to the right, you're gonna see part of a parabola. That's square root x. Now imagine the point x equals 64. We know that square root 64 is eight. That's a special value. So what we can do is we can say that at the point where x is 64, um, you're going to get, this is not, this is drawn to a very large scale. You're gonna get the point which looks like 64 comma eight. And then you wanna find the tangent line, okay? So the tangent line is gonna look something, it's like a, a line, it's gonna look something like this. Okay, that's going to be the tangent line. We want to find the equation of that line. Now, the reason I draw the picture is not just for the line, but also it's going to come up in part C and D. Okay, so we're going to understand the estimation. So you see the tangent line is very close to the graph of the function as long as you are near 64. Okay, so as you get further and further away, it's going to get further away. But close to 64, it's a good approximation. The equation of the tangent line through a point, we're going to use the point slope form. So we know that it passes through 64 comma 8. And the point slope form is going to tell us that what is, the what is going to be the slope? The slope is going to be the derivative at x equals to 64. Okay, so in this situation, we're looking at the derivative was one over two root x. So we know that f prime of 64 is going to equal to one over two root 64, which is going to equal to one over two times eight, which is one over 16. Okay, that's going to be f prime of 64. And the point slope form of a line is it's going to be y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. Okay, if it passes through y, x1 comma y1. So here, of course, you know that when your y and your x are y1 and x1 respectively, the equation is zero equals zero. So that's how you remember that x1 comma y1 should be a point on the line. So that's the point slope form. So therefore, we're going to get y minus eight, because that's the y value, square root 64. y minus eight is going to equal to one over 16 times x minus 64. So we have that equation of the tangent line and you can write it in a nice form as well if you like. So what you can do is you can just write it as minus 64 over 16 is going to be minus four and then you add eight, that's going to be plus four. So you can also write it as y is equal to one over 16 x plus four. Okay, so that's going to be the equation of the tangent line. So that is part B. Okay, so we've got part A and part B done. Now we want to approximate the square root of 66. This is the y value at 66, which is pretty close to 64, right? So you'd expect that if you go to 66, you're going to get some point, which is going to be very close to the tangent line. So we're going to get 66 comma the square root of 66. That's going to be our point. And as you can see already, it's going to be below the tangent line. And we're going to explore this more in part D, okay? Why it's below the tangent line. But in this case, we've got that. Now, how do we find the y value at square root 66 approximating with the tangent line? Well, we plug in x is equal to 66. So I like to plug into this equation. Maybe it looks a little bit easier. So here we're going to get that y minus eight is that. So if x is 66, then you're going to get that the point on the tangent line is going to be um, y minus eight. So it's going to be y minus eight is going to equal to one over 16 times 66 minus 64. That is going to be, we're going to solve for y to find out what the tangent line point is at x is 66. So y minus eight is going to be equal to one over 16 um, times 66 minus 64, which is two, which is equal to one over eight. So therefore y is going to equal to eight plus one over eight, which is going to equal to 8.125. So that's going to be our approximation for the square root of 66. Okay, so it's going to be approximately 
So I'm going to put this here. Square root of 66 is going to be approximately 8.125. In fact, it's going to be an over approximation as we are asked in part D. Is it an overestimate or underestimate? So we see here it's an overestimate because the tangent line is always going above the graph. Now, why this is going above the graph, other than just sort of drawing and seeing it, comes down to concavity. It comes down to the second derivative. Okay, so if you know the first derivative of f, which we found out, I'm just going to erase this here. The first derivative of f, and watch till the end because I'll tell you what the real answer is for the square root of 66 and how remarkably close this one is. Okay, so, and also we're going to understand concavity. So we know f prime of x was equal to half times x to the minus half. I'm just leaving it in this form so we can apply the derivative again with the power rule and we can get f double prime of x is going to be minus half is going to come out in front. So it's going to be minus 1 by 4 times x to the negative 3 halves. Now x to the negative 3 halves, as long as x is in the domain where it's greater than 0, x to the negative 3 halves is always positive, but negative of that is going to be negative. So the second derivative is negative, which is basically telling us that the rate of change of the derivative, which is the rate of change of the slope of the tangent line, is negative. And you can sort of see that from the picture. As you go along the curve, the tangent line will kind of become more and more horizontal. Right? It gets more and more horizontal. And so because of that, that is telling us the shape of the graph. That is the concavity. In this case, we say it's concave down. Okay, So this is concave down. And when your graph is going to be concave down, your tangent line is going to give you an over approximation of the actual value of the function, like in here. So that's the rigorous mathematical reasoning for that. And if you're interested in what the actual square root of 64 is, well, the actual square root of 64 is equal to 8.12403 dot dot dot. So you see that if you subtract the actual square root of 64 from our predicted value 8.125, we're going to get 0. 0.000 something. So that tells you the first three are going to be O's. So it's that close to the actual answer. And I find this a super cool application of calculus. Thanks so much for watching. I've got so many calculus videos on my channel. Before you click away, I'm creating elite education of math at all levels for high school, college students, and everyone who's interested. This math at all levels, I'm creating a library of math. I'm a research mathematician, and I'm doing everything on my channel. Nothing's off limits, so check it out. And I'm super excited to see you in the next video. Wish you all the best, and I'll see you soon.